We've talked about this on the macro on Tuesday. It is all about the timing of the engage being synchronized with the Reaper and with the rest of the team. Oftentimes the Winston will not immediately go deep because it's a good way to die really fast if you don't have cooldowns, but we'll look for either a cooldown advantage to hard push um, or a way to set up a deeper engage. So what we're looking for Winston is fearless is good positioning and good timing. Um, only other thing I could say here is uh, target priority can be interesting here. So finding ways to force the enemy sojourn's cooldowns, Kiriko's cooldowns, Reaper's cooldowns, then hard push off of that. Probably going to be spending a lot of time shooting the enemy Reaper slash whatever he can with right click and guarding his bubble like his life. His bubble is his life. Do I do preds? I do not do preds, no. There we go. Do you even notice the target priority right there? Who's he shooting first? He's shooting the, the, the sojourn, right? Now, <clears throat> choking out tank. Notice that he doesn't use bubble there. He does not want to use bubble until his, the enemy team is actually committed. They get the space early. That's awesome. No bubble, no bubble, no hard commit. Now he'll probably hold this corner here and there's the bubble. Now, very important, a couple of things here. First off, his priority is bubbling once the enemy team walks past the choke because he's now isolated all of these targets. And then it's even in very interesting to know who he's actually shooting here. I would have expected him to shoot the Reaper here for better return on investment. I think forcing Reaper Wraith here is more important for the Winston, and that's something that his low damage can still do relatively decent here. So I'm a little confused here. I don't know why he's focusing the monkey right now. I don't feel like this is the proper play, um, but maybe I just don't understand something that he understands. We'll play it by ear and we'll just watch. I would have much preferred him to focus down Profit as he turns the corner here instead. Right now, I think zapping on proper would have 100% forced Wraith there. Um, interesting. Now is the hard commit. It's not a very deep commit. And actually the crucial, can you guys spot the crucial mistake here? What's the crucial mistake here that Fearless makes? Now, one thing I'm going to point out here is that Fearless is probably the best monkey in the world. But even the best monkeys in the world make fundamental basic errors. I told you Dallas was going to be good. Yeah. Watch this. He jumps in after the cap, so it's already too late. But then he jumps in with one second left on bubble. He focuses Reaper, which is who we expected to focus, right? He needs to focus his threat, and he, because he can't reach backline without going too deep, right? He's going to focus the Reaper. But the problem here is look at his bubble. He is just now placing it. He jumped with one and a half seconds left on bubble, and that was just long enough for a look at his HP, look at his armor. By the time the bubble places, he's already at under 300 HP and he's lost his armor. He needed to wait literally, literally less than one second before jumping so that he would have been able to bubble dance this Reaper a little bit easier. That's why he dies. You see, he actually dies before his bubble breaks. You see that? Crucial error there. But I love the Reaper focus. And they do get a lot of space off of that. So I'm not gonna break down why Dallas wins that. Um, it's just, there's just too much to break down. I want to focus mostly on Fearless, but it could have been mechanics. It could have been uh, uh, um, a better Sojourn shot, a better Sojourn E, a better Amp, more better focus fire. Could be a lot of things. So Dallas wins it. Are they going to pressure the choke? Reaper gets through. Winston gets through. Just zapping squishies. Again, you see this here. Always trying to zap the squishies, get chipped them down just a little bit. Now, this is interesting. This is a very aggressive engage, but remember, it has to be earned. You cannot just aggressively engage with no reason. So there's an aggressive engage. He goes in very deep, even a little early, but that's because they're gonna Kiriko ult. So he's gonna immediately bubble. He's gonna get bubble again very, very soon. He creates a split. And then at the same time, 
they're gonna be able to push out and cause the ca cause the isolation here now i'm actually kind of curious yeah i don't know it's, it's kind of this is the this is the tricky thing with kiriko where like you want everybody stacked but i wonder if i wonder if there's some way of like creating a flank here with a reaper maybe sparkle off of the flank here could have been good but either way um it's tricky though because sparkle fires so faster than the ult it's like you almost want everyone to stack up if possible okay so they cause the split once they've rotated and that's pretty much it not nothing too fancy right you think they probably wanted to force the split i agree this is just trying to slow down the enemy team. There's no real serious crowd control here. So there's no like sleep dart or anything. So there's no real reason not to just kind of stand here and be a general nuisance and maybe make it slower for them to come out of spawn. Just buys a little bit of extra time. Maybe they were like, we need to farm up our beats. So we need to slow down this engage a little bit. There's the fake. Now, the question now is what has Fearless seen that is allowing him to hard engage here? Because again, we talked about hard engages not being wise. Now, what's unusual about this composition, first off, is that if you hard engage, even though it looks like with Sojourn and Kiriko and Lucio that there are squishy targets you can dive, all of those targets have escape cooldown. So what ends up happening is if you hard commit without a secondary option, you will die. It's just primal. Exactly. You just primal. He hits them at when they're at their weakest, which is rotating. And look at who he's focusing, chat. Who is he jumping? This is not an accident. This is not an accident. He is focusing, he's focusing either Reaper or Sojourn. Reaper is great to focus because once he uses his Wraith, he doesn't have the range, of, he's, he's a very vulnerable target, right? So you can focus the Reaper early. Or you can focus Sojourn early because once she uses her shift, she is also vulnerable. So you can use your jump bubble to force the cooldown and then continue and pursue afterwards with your Primal. Both Reaper and Sojourn, in addition, are excellent targets to focus because they are the targets that often end up killing you. So if you're able to take those targets off the field, you're going to do your favor or team a huge service. All right. So uh, probably see Fearless pursue the Sojourn. And again, that's all it takes, right? Just a little bit of chaos. And now he's on the Reaper. Probably actually, that probably was the Kirigo to force or TP there. But again, Reaper, 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 Reaper. That's what's going to kill us, y'all. That jump was kind of questionable, not going to lie. Would have thought that he might have gotten punished for that one. Very passive, just controlling front line. That jump is interesting. Always Reaper, always Reaper. Good bubble split. Nothing really fancy here, to be honest with y'all. He's doing a good job focusing the right targets. He's off of good timing with his team. He's utilizing cover really well, and he's being patient with his hard engages, and he's making sure that he's earning the hard engage either with the Kiriku ultimate or Primal Rage. Now, again, it's interesting here, his choice of target. I would have expected Reaper. I would have actually liked I think this is a mistake. I'm, I'm very certain that this is a mistake. We've just seen Reaper Wraith. They're gonna Kiriko ult. Do not focus the monkey right now. I think this is maybe because they think they can blow him up because it's a Kiriko ult. So they're just gonna go bam, 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 bam. But I would have preferred them to pursue the Reaper instead and then Kiriko try ult on top of the Reaper. Um, again, it's just not what Fearless is best at is shooting a monkey. There's a Kiriko ult benefit. Again, immediately bubble and they go from there. Okay. Um, that's awesome, Connor Parks PvP. I appreciate that. I'm glad to hear that. I will say though that doesn't necessarily you might have just gotten on a lucky streak, to be perfectly honest. I think there's definitely good value there, but a lot of times coaching can be 25-20% of the value. You might have gotten lucky, who knows? I appreciate it nonetheless. I'm not trying to raid on the parade. I'm just trying to be realistic here. Can't always expect big win streaks, you know? Okay, this is really interesting. Now, here is the interesting thing, chat. Chokes are very important. Chokes are very important. So what chokes are is they are corners that at, for example,
I don't need this tip. Your audio is fucked spillow. Can you guys hear me? When did it when did it cut when did it cut out? Huh. Huh. <laughs> I guess I need to lose audio more often. Thanks for the, the bits. <laughs> Guys, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, chokes are just basically places where to shoot people, you have to walk into the position where like, okay, okay, I, I, I'm gonna demonstrate this really, I really think this is important. I'm, I'm messing with you, I'm messing with you. Okay, uh, chokes are basically where you're holding the choke here, right? All your buddies are here. And what ends up happening is you at, you create a 1v5 because as one enemy goes through the choke, that enemy is shot at by five people, right? But these people, these four people, can't shoot you because of the corner. So the, either the enemy team has to clump up into giant one herd and walk through the choke, in which case any spam damage is going to hit everybody, whereas your teammates might be positioned here, might be positioned here, off all these sweet, juicy off angles. Or they go in one or two at a time and they get turbo blasted, right? So chokes make it so that they have brief moments of 1v5, essentially. Now, what's all that being said, <laughs> Fearless pushes out of the choke. Do you see this? Now, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious to see. There is times and place where pushing out of the choke can be good because it catches the enemy team off guard. It catches people off tempo. For example, you can see it right now. Profit is technically isolated. So if you can quickly recognize this, they can force his wraith without using a single cooldown. But I don't know if this ends up working out. Yeah, so this is not good. <laughs> I'm actually very happy to show you why this is not good. Because look at fuel. Fuel does exactly what the reason why chokes are good. A reason, are, like right here, look at this 1v5, right? There are multiple members of Dallas right now that are doing nothing. Edison can shoot nothing. Fielder can shoot nothing. He can heal, but he can shoot nothing. Chio can shoot nothing. Uh, 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 Sparkle can shoot nothing. Whereas Iris can shoot shield. Vindam can shoot shield. Smurf can shoot fearless. Prophet can shoot shield. Fitz can shoot shield. So this is a 1v5 for Dallas because they walked, they had a choke and they gave it up. Now, you can see this because look at, obviously no team has lost HP, but fearless has used bubble. Now this is clearly them trying to isolate and punish Prophet. Clearly. Prop, but Oh, 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 this is why, chat. This is why. That's why. That's why. Never mind. I'm sitting here so confused. Like, what, what are they doing? This is why. They have a bubble advantage. They have a bubble advantage that they want to push. Oh! Okay, I don't know if I've just autopiloted for the last 10 seconds or not paid attention because I was talking about chokes. Okay, but Smurf goes in, uses bubble, doesn't get anything out of it. Profit also uses Wraith. Fuel now have a Wraith advantage and a bubble advantage that they want to abuse. So then they try and hard push, but the problem is, is they give up the choke to do so, which isn't necessarily bad if your timing is perfect, right? If you go three, two, one, boom, and explode on Profit, this guy is dead. GG's, you're over. There's nothing his team can do to him. They can Suzu him, but it was, it, they, they, that's another cooldown. Then they have literally nothing left and you win the fight off of that. So Fearless says, bubble advantage, bubble push, push, push. I promise you, Fearless is going, push, 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 whatever, whatever it is in Korean, okay? So, but the problem here is there's another Overwatch fundamental that lorded over them. He said, you may have a cooldown advantage, but don't forget chokes. Don't forget timing, Mwah! right? So they they won the cooldown trade early on, but then because they rushed it or whatever, the choke screwed them over, but more importantly, their timing was horrible.
You see this? By the time they actually get to profit, their bubble is broken. They're now walking into the middle of a nasty crossfire. They don't get the kill. And guess what Smurf has, chat? Smurf has bubble in two seconds. Their day is over. That's it. So I'm telling you, chat, things like punishing cooldown advantages and things like that are really important. But you know what's more important than punishing cooldown advantages? Timing. Timing is more important, chat. Timing is more important. And Dallas muffed it. Dallas scouted the cooldown advantage, but they were not able to get quite on the same page. The best thing to do there for Fearless was to simply wait like literally one second. Be like, push, 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 three, two, one, go. But yeah. Okay. Uh. So he comes back because they decide to counter rotate back towards main, or at least fake that they're going to do that. Now, this is actually so important, chat. We're going to actually shift our focus to Smurf. Why does Smurf jump away? Why does Smurf jump away? Is he going to die? No. Why does Smurf jump away? What happens if he stays? Yes, he knows that whether it was the fake rotate or whatever else, or his team is not set up, or he got poked out. If he stays, he's going to get his bubble force. Now that's not necessarily bad. Using bubble for value is good, but he knows that his team was not ready for this fake rotate. And if you look at it, look at Prophet. Is Prophet ready to punish? No, Prophet's half HP. Prophet can't push right now. Look at Fitz. Is Fitz in a good position to do damage or get a fat E? No. So he knows through communication or just a gut feeling that my team is just not ready to punish this choke. So if I use my bubble now, it will be literally just me getting good value from it, nobody else. So I'm gonna get out so I don't get my bubble forced. And you can wa watch, watch Dynasty's position. Watch this. Fitz gets baited here. Fitz gets sucked down here. Fitz, 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 Fitz. Fitz is now not in position. Prophet is actually pretty... I don't know what happened to Prophet. I don't know if he got Railgun body shot. But Fitz and Vindame are not in a position to follow up off of this bubble. So he gets out. Now, Prophet has to follow. If Prophet doesn't follow, that's going to be a cooldown advantage. And there it is right there. You guys see that? You guys see it? There's the Wraith. There it is. Dallas fake rotates. Trades Sojourn E for Wraith. And it manages to get out of the choke. So, I don't know how I feel about Wraith versus Sojourn E, but either way, the fact that Dallas got out of the choke without using Bubble is pretty nice. Christopher just won Coach of the Year. <laughs> this is my surprise face. Now, rigged, <laughs> Chris deserves it, did a great job. I'm not surprised, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Okay, uh, now chat, Reaper shift diff. So what is Fearless going to do now? Why the heck is Fearless jumping in deep? Well, we know now, don't we? The fake rotate and Sojourn E forced a Reaper shift advantage. When Reaper doesn't have shift, he cannot play as aggressively. When Reaper cannot play as aggressively, then the Winston doesn't have to play as safe. Do you see? Do you see? This is why they go for that agree aggressive jump. He gets a Wraith advantage. That means his Reaper can play more aggressively. Now, Sparkle's about to Wraith this right here. Oh, huh. whoopsies. <laughs> Should have Wraith that right there. Now, let's check out Fearless's timing. Was his timing good? Was he too early? Um, I think was probably pretty reasonable. I think looks okay to me. Manages to get a lot of space for his team. They get control of the corner. They bubble trade. 
Sparkle just messes up. I think it was a pretty reasonable fight there from Fearless. No real complaints there. Now we've got Primal. So maybe we get a cooldown advantage before we go Primal. Maybe we just go Primal. And there it is. Do you see? We got Primal Rage. We got Sojourn. I'm going to jump on the Sojourn. We're going to immediately force shift. And then I'm going to Primal. He's screaming, go, 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 team, 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 go, team, go. And there's the Sojourn. And then look at the split. Look, look, look at it. Team is inside of him. Great timing from Dallas. They're able to quickly get onto the middle of the enemy team. And Fitz is in serious trouble. That's it. Now the Reaper. Now the Reaper or the Kiriko without uh, her TP. Very well played by Fearless. I don't know what happened elsewhere in the fight, but do you guys, you guys are gonna start to see things more often. So we're taking, we're going very slow right now, but we can almost predict his move before he does it now. Reaper focus. Walking out of a choke, very focused on that Reaper. I mean, Kiriko presents herself, so. And then now, look at that, look at that, look at that. You see that? Reaper shift, can play more aggressively. He, I don't think he meant to jump on the Reaper there, but yeah, okay. Setting up on high ground. <clears throat> good scouting, good setup for the engage. Help, gets, helps you in a good position. Hopefully Dallas is ready to pressure. Now look at, look at, look at, look at this. Why is Fearless going in? Now obviously there's ults online, so that's the number one thing. But also the question is, was Dallas ready for this? Looks like it. Look, see the E? You guys see the E? See the E? See this? Probably gonna see, I don't know what we're gonna see here. I, I would imagine probably a Death Blossom, probably pretty soon. They're gonna try and force that cleanse from Iris and then Death Blossom. That was it, I think. Yeah, that was it. <clears throat> but they're probably not gonna push inside though. Ah, do you guys notice the timing of this push? Why do Dallas push inside? I said they would not push inside and then they do. Why do, why do they do that? Why do they do that? Why do they push inside? They said they wouldn't push inside, but they did. They tricked me, but why do they do that? Reaper left. Yep, exactly. Reaper left. Go. That's our window. Now, I don't actually think this was necessarily a good play. I think the easier play would have been to shoot, simply shoot Profit and force his uh, uh, his, his Wraith out. I think that would have been fairly easy uh, to do. But there's at least some sort of logic behind that, right? This is a huge boot from Vindame. Really shuts down. Look at this. The bubble's a little bit late. So this is the timing, right? The timing here is not clean between Dallas. Look at this. Boop right there. But the cleanse from Fielder is late. The cleanse is used to prevent the boop, but the cleanse doesn't happen until he's already been booped. So that's a timing issue between Fielder and Sparkle, okay? You can either help your Death Blossom with Suzu, or you can help your Death Blossom with Bubble, one or the other. Very crucial that you get one of those things, so. So then it's a mess, though, because Dallas has walked into the middle of a small room with a Reaper off. Well, actually, the Reaper off angle doesn't even matter. They just had to walk into a small room into the middle of Monkey Cleave. That doesn't work out well. The Death Blossom gets booped. Disaster. So once again, bad timing really scuffs up Dallas. Man, they're going to lose this run. Okay. If we do this right, they won't even know. All right, let's, uh, let's, take, let's take a gander here. Cover usage is going to be really important in this right here. Now, a couple of important things happen here, all very, very quickly from Fearless. One, immediately tucking to cover so he doesn't take too much damage from the Kiriko or Sojourn. Then both Reapers TPing for Mega, because this cover, again, very powerful, right? And then you most immediately, this is why I was so confused when he was focusing the monkey earlier. I don't know if it was just like a brain flub or what. He immediately turns onto the Reaper because again, return on investment on an armored monkey versus a Reaper, much better. So immediate pressure on the Reaper. Watch what else happens here, okay? So Fearless takes the Mega. Now, I don't think he would have wanted to take it there, but again, small little resource that you steal from the enemy team. Look at all the pressure onto the enemy Reaper. I'm actually not sure how Sparkle loses this HP trade. Let's actually take a look at this really fast. Okay. 
It looks like Lucio headshots. Yeah, Lucio gets damaged earlier. Yeah, Lucio gets damaged earlier and Chio isn't able to get there in time. Um, so it's really just a man advantage here, really, that, that, that costs Dallas this. But this is all fine from Fearless. Good target priority. Uh, they're just the lack of Lucio there really hurts. I know we are bleeding a little bit into the macro here, but I think it's worth pointing out whenever it's not unbelievably tedious. Can they bait a cooldown out without walking forward? Can they force a Reaper Wraith? Can they bait a Sojourn Need? Can they bait a Sojourn Shot? Now this is interesting. <clears throat> they kind of look, look at look at look at this. This is this is a this is not going to kill the Lucio, but cooldown advantage right here. If your Winston <laughs> can walk onto a squishy without having to press shift, this is crazy. Like this is really bad from Vendame. So Vendame's gonna have to panic. He dies for it. I mean, to be honest, y'all, he just feeds. That, that, that's up. That's great recognition from Fearless. If Vindame was not here, we would have seen a 3, 2, 1 explode on the Reaper. Now, this is what's crazy. What's the problem about this from Dynasty? Look at this from Dynasty's perspective. What's the issue here? Even if Vindame doesn't die here, what looks really bad right now? Remember we said the weakness of walking out of a choke for Dallas is 1v5. But think about it. Is this really a 1v5? I see three people. I don't see five. There's a split here. There's a split from the dynasty. Some of them, <clears throat> now this is, I'm not saying like it's bad to be split. You could have had your Reaper here, your Lucio riding up with your Reaper, your Kiriko in point, your Winston actually with the Reaper as well, and then your Sojourn off angling. But again, it would be all off angling in the same spot. These guys are positioned to fight here, whereas these guys are positioned, including Fitz, are fi fighting here. So this is actually, this is not even scary for Dallas to walk out of. The, even though they get there eventually, it's, I mean, actually they don't even try. They don't even get there. It's just a straight up fight win. Again, cover usage, you notice that? He tucked behind the wall. There's the target focus there. Very important you get that Sojourn down. I don't know why Smurf is up there. I think they were capping point. Uh, there must have been a miscommunication about where they wanted to hold. But this is what I'm talking about, y'all. Like, communication and teamwork. That's why Dallas is usually the more consistent uh, team. We've seen some timing issues with Dallas. Okay. They're breaking the choke rule again. They're pushing through a choke. But why are they doing that? This is why. Right? They're breaking the choke rule because they think that they have Kiriko ultimate first. So they want to use it quickly. He gets booped on his jump, so he immediately bails. He doesn't keep reaching for the backline because he knows it's over. I'm not going to be able to kill the backline. So now what they're going to try and do is Fearless is going to try and zone backline and the rest of Dallas is going to pursue the monkey. So then now Fearless is thinking, okay, monkey's overextended. I can't kill backline. So my job now is not to kill. It's to survive. Remember that question we had earlier about when to play aggressively versus when to play defensively? This is the answer right here. Fearless knows I can't really kill backline right now. I'm getting, gonna get no help from my team because my team is all focusing on the enemy monkey. So my entire job is only to make sure that I'm surviving so while we can burn down Smurf, okay? Now, he has Primal here, so we might also see him... Okay, well, that was easy. Primal Rage just to be safe. They're up two, but there was a chance that he gets traded and then that they're able to clutch out. <clears throat> but Fearless has a very clear target with these Primal Rages. Very, very, very clear target with, his, with these Primal Rages. I'm not sure what we're going to see here. It's likely we're going to see... Yeah, I was, I was curious to see why they were holding so close. I was expecting them to play a little bit more open space with their Sojourn Ultimate. Um, and play a little bit slower until they got their beat slash death blossom, which is exactly what they do. They end up backing off to the next corner. Now, Fearless has to be careful here. It is pretty easy to force a bubble from this, so he'll probably jump out because, again, his team doesn't have a good angle on the enemy team, and the enemy team can get a good angle on him. So he will almost certainly jump out in the next, like, half second. Yeah. So from here, he'll go to the next corner where his team is a little bit... Do you see now this position here, his team has a much easier time putting pressure on the enemy team, right? It's not perfect, but it's much better than it was inside that choke. 
jump out again, but they've traded bubbles. Would have preferred more patience with that Sojourn ultimate, to be honest. That was not a good Sojourn ultimate. Cover, 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 cover. There it is. Ooh. I think that was actually really quite good from Fearless there. Jumped in, survived. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the beat. I don't know if it was just a mechanical play. Um, to be honest with you, also not having their own Sojourn ult because it was literally just wasted the previous fight also sucks as well. Um, <clears throat> all right, timing gonna be crucial again here. Uh oh, they're pushing. He could probably just completely disengage this, yeah. And now that's a lot. Of, oh, Edison, how does Edison die? Where is Edison? Where the heck is Edison? Oh, he gets rolled. I, I mean, that was that's unfortunate. Okay. So we're probably going to see Primal Rage coming up soon, and again, it's going to be on that Sojourn. Point pressure, focus on the Reaper, right? And then here comes the Primal Rage on the uh, the Sojourn. Oh, he doesn't even need it. So to be honest with you all, that was just we have better fighting on ult than, we, than you do, so we're just going to go to point. So they're just going to go plop bubble on point, and guys are just going to Kiriko ultimate on point. If anybody touches, they die. That's really that simple. And then by the time... And then they just Death Blossom on top of that. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's that simple. They had two for one. Two for one with a better ultimate situation as well. Okay. Primal Rage on Sojourn if needed. That's basically it, y'all. So <clears throat> what we've seen from Fearless is good cover usage. Timing was good, could have been cleaner at some points and instances. I think specifically that point on Nepal Shrine where they were trying to push a cooldown advantage wasn't as good. Very much focused on the DPS, the Reaper, not getting sucked into the Winston versus Winston foolishness. And then when he had a cooldown advantage or Primal looking to go in extra aggressive, extra deep. Um, because that, because again, that you know that I'm not going to get punished for going as aggressive there because I have the resources to do so. Are Owl VODs public? Sadly, no. I'm working with a contenders team, helping out a contenders team in access for an OBR account so I can do these publicly. Is this second nature to players or do they actively think about this? Yes and no. Um, most of it is second nature. Some of it is not. With good teams, more of it is second nature. With bad teams, less of it is. The goal, like anything, like a bronze player learning how to become silver or a master's player learning to become GM is consciously practicing it. That what Fearless might be working on is communicating better with his team his timing he could be trying to they could be i know they're actively thinking about their bubble usage a lot i know he's actively thinking about target priority for primal rage but some of the other things are probably a little bit more autopiloted um okay let's uh let's let's watch a little bit more before the next match goes let's just watch a little bit of king's row we'll keep going until the the match goes live Now, why is he not holding this choke here? Well, because the angles that his team wants to take aren't very good on this choke. But if he holds this choke, his Reaper's got a good off angle, his Sojourn's got a good off angle, his Lucio's got a good position, his Kiriko's got a safe position. So the tank doesn't hold necessarily where the tank wants to hold. The tank holds where he wants to hold and where is helpful for his team too. Notice he doesn't use bubble, doesn't need it, don't use it. Uh-oh, Sojourn split, guys. Sojourn split, guys. Careful. Reaper TP, Reaper TP, Reaper TP. Now he TPs up here to, to flip and shoot this guy. He TPs up here to flip and shoot this guy. Maybe his Reaper will come with him as well. Okay, there's the Reaper guys. They're, they're rotating, they're rotating, they're rotating. I'm gonna meet them there. Not using bubble. I'm not gonna use bubble until they walk out of the choke into my team's LOS. 
You're not gonna make me. You're not gonna bait me. You're not gonna bait me into wasting a cooldown before the fight starts. You're gonna have to walk into my team of space where I've got great off angles with my Reaper, with my uh, with my backline. Look at this. There's the bubble, right? They earned it, right? They earned it. Dynasty earned it. They walked out. They they threatened him. They took damage. And notice that he's able to get his bubble off in time before he starts to lose too much armor. And look at that cleave, y'all. Look at that cleave. Bang. You'll see a lot of it seem what from what I'm seeing by the way with Suzu is a lot of Kirikos are Suzuing those initial trades once those bubbles start to break because that's when Profit or Sparkle can land like one big shot and get a cooldown advantage. So they use the Suzu to preventively prevent their Winston from getting to one HP or from their Reaper from getting one shot or from their Reaper from getting just rolled. So uh, that seems to be the general impression that I'm getting. Don't take my word 100% for it because we're not super focusing on that. So we'll probably see a soft engage. Bubble is late as he is. Okay, yeah, yeah, that bubble is a little late. That bubble was too late. He waited too long in the bubble there. He should have bubbled a little bit earlier while he was still in armor. He tried to edge it and he went a little too far. Now, this is cool. They farm up the ultimate fast. I don't know if this is something that they're specifically trying to do, but it could be that once Fielder saw they had an advantage that they wanted to play slow. Aggressive jump. We have ults. They don't. Let's go. Nice. A little bit of early pressure here, but again, never anything that's going to cost his team a lot of HP. He just wants to farm up a little bit of extra primal. Now, he has primal now, so we already know what's going to happen. We know how his engage is going to look in terms of aggression, and we know who he's going to go aggressive on. The only question is when and where this aggression is going to actually happen. Okay, it looks like Das might be holding a little bit more aggressively. And he's going to look in for Sojourn. Where's Sojourn? Where's Sojourn? Where's Sojourn? Where's Sojourn? Where's Sojourn? Doesn't end up needing to use it yet. So they're actually going to try and kite out the ultimate entirely. Do you see this? Dallas just pieces out. Fearless follows. Now, now here's the thing, chat. It would have been really easy for Fearless to just press the button there, right? This is where timing and teamwork matter. He realizes his team calls. We're going to give up space. We're not going to do it. We're not going to fight that Kiriko ultimate with your primal rage. We're just going to kite out. And then late beat. And then we now walk forward. And then now we might. Yeah, there it is. And even then, he still knows there's a Reaper inside of a Kiriko ultimate, so I might die. So he's, he's there's no greeting. There's the Reaper focus. They're going to kite this out one entirely, I promise you. And there's the second ultimate to match. Chio gets caught, though. He isn't able to get out. Good cover usage. Hard engage because they're up a bunch. Can he cut off the Lusu? He does. Nice job. A little bit of early pressure. Oh, he messes up that jump. He actually messed up that jump. Um, maybe, maybe he did. Okay, let's 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 look at this again. I think he meant to get to the corner a little faster. So here's what Dynasty. Here's what Fuel is doing again. Again, the goal is to play aggressively and to look for an opportunity to Kiriku ultimate. So Fearless is playing very very ballsy. Even just kind of slopping his jump away. We'll probably see Kiriku ultimate in a couple seconds. As soon as they push, right there. And then on the Sojourn. Oh, winnable. Winnable. Ah, oh, unfortunate. Okay. Yo, we got the, the big stage today. Okay, they're gonna play the corner and they're gonna absolutely turbo stomp Dynasty once they turn that corner, hopefully. Trying not to use bubble until he absolutely needs to. There's a Katune rush. He really needs to be careful here, actually. I'm actually not so certain about this primal, to be honest with y'all. I would have preferred him to just jump, disengage entirely. Um, in which case...
Yeah, he had time to jump out here, I think. I think he had time to jump out. It's hard to say. It's hard to say, chat. So basically, they're, they're, he's playing this choke really hard. Dynasty has to use Kiriko ultimate to break it. It's the most powerful ultimate in the game currently in this meta. So he's going to then Primal Rage to honestly disengage. Um, Dallas has to disengage this. It all could also be that his Primal Rage here is what creates space that allows his team to actually safely disengage this. Do you see this? Nobody's focusing him down. Um, or everybody is focusing him down so that he can, his team can get out safely. So a one-for-one -one trade and giving a little bit of space isn't too bad with that ult trade. Next corner. And now we'll probably see maybe just a neutral engage. Ooh. Reaper, 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 Reaper. You guys see it. Always Reaper. If there's anything in the front line, it's not Winston, it's Reaper. Anything on the flank, it's Sojourn, right? Kiriko as well, if he, if he can access, but yeah. Now, why did they give up that choke? Well, there's nobody there, right? It's just fearless. Timing, 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 timing. Not good space to hold if your team isn't there to hold it. Now, we'll probably see Dallas again looking to use a Kiriko ultimate as soon as Dynasty commits. Then Dame will probably pop beat, uh, and then Shield will probably mirror, and Dallas will probably win. That kills everything. <laughs> ah, no, 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 Dallas, no, Dallas, no, Dallas, no, Dallas. That's not the play. That is not the play. That is not the play. Yeah, not the play. Four v fives really matter in Overwatch too. That is not the play whatsoever. Especially when when it, the enemy team is in a really safe position as well, to where you can't really hard commit. Like that beat was just the stand there. You know what I'm saying? That was not that was not wise. Zoning monkey. There is the Kiriko ultimate. Dallas probably loses this fight. Oh wow! Sparkle just completely destroys. Oh my gosh! Fight winning shots right there. That literally wins soul the fight. There's actually nothing to say from Fearless's standpoint here. There's almost an un unwinnable fight. Wow. Okay. Cover, 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 cover. We have Primal Rage, so maybe we see some aggression on Sojourn. Mid fight. There's nothing that he needs to use the Primal to survive for, so we'll probably see more of an aggressive Primal. He doesn't need to use it to survive Kiriko ulti. There it is. Where is Sojourn? There's Sojourn. Goodbye, Sojourn. And that's it. You want Stalker and Reaper, but that doesn't mean that you play Prophet. There's the timing, y'all. You, you see this timing on the neutral? It's not even a deep dive, but look at the Lucio. Look at the Winston. Look at the Reaper. You see what we talked about this? 3, 2, 1. They turn the corner. This is a choke, right? This is rough for Dallas to break through, but they break through as five. It's explosive. It's really, really nice timed. Really nicely timed. Isolation on Reaper. That's a really disgusting Sojourn E. We talked about Sojourn E value right here. Here's your Sojourn E value, chat. Big shot. Sojourn E unbelievably difficult for Dallas to deal with this. I mean, this Sojourn E basically single-handedly wins uh, Dynasty this space here, if they do win it. But this this is this feels great from Dallas, but then it's like, oh my gosh, this feels horrible. It's a monstrous Sojourn E. It's a big kill on Fitz. They're going to be able to reset and push back in with the respawn advantage. Uh, I come in, guy, both if you can. <laughs> both if you can. In this particular composition, you're going to see Lucio playing more with the team than more split off. But there are certain compositions where it's not so brawly and stacked up, where Lucio's will split off and help different off angles. Um, wait, what is the question? Who do I coach for? Oh, huh. Oh, that sucks. Sparkle got his Wraith forced early. Ha, ah, did you see what they tried to do when they forced Sparkle's Wraith? Look at this. Look, look, look who Smurf goes for. He's looking for Reaper. <laughs> he gets booped. Great boop by uh, by uh, Chio. There's a counter bubble. Might pursue, but again, he's pursuing near cover. He's very cautious. Reaper focus first. Ooh. Sniper game. And there we go. I've been coaching an owl for two seasons. Contenders. Yelling at bronzes for way too many years. 
professional bodybuilder, athlete. Philanthropist. Male model. You see the corner here? Bang. Oh, that's such a that's just, that's such a nice payoff, y'all. Do you see this? Okay, so this is actually super crucial. This is a micro play here, but this is where it comes down to timing and target focus. Watch this. Watch this. Three, two, one. Kasune Rush. Reaper focus. Now, why is this so important? Well, he gets... This is it. Do you see this? He got E'd by his uh, Kiriko, so he didn't need to Wraith, but the timing was so scary that Prophet thought he was going to die. And this is why it's crazy. Now you're thinking, it doesn't really matter because he's going to get his Wraith back soon anyway, right? Right, but which Reaper is shooting right now and which Reaper is not? Am I gluten-free and CPR certified? Yes. <clears throat> which Reaper is shooting? <laughs> the, this one. So then they will win the neutral. <laughs> it's that, that simple. There are five people shooting. There are four people shooting. And one of them is not the Reaper. Sparkle is doing this. Profit is not. So that's completely free space for uh, fuel and maybe a fight win. Sure enough. Crucial. Crucial. That was actually so important. That micro play from Fearless and his team. Forklift certified? No, unfortunately not. I asked, but they set the standards really high. Really high. You should try to get attention on these tweets between mats. What tweets? What are you guys talking about? Leak the juice. Oh, what, what, what's the... Oh, I was like... Oh, okay, I thought for a second there, I was like, uh, is it starting? But it's not starting. Okay, we're good. This is just spawn camping, essentially, so they can get cart for free, and they have a Sojourn ult, so they're like, we'll just take a fight out in open space. Here comes the Sojourn pressure. That was... Actually, I was like, why is he focusing Lucio? I think it's because they are trying to Ajax him. They're trying to get a kill before he gets his beat off. And again, the Sojourn hunt. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! Ha! You know, it's the Reaper, right? Even if he's like, oh, the Reaper kills me while in Primal Rage. I mean, yes, kind of, but also you can just completely zone the backline, right? Goodbye. That's fight. That's map. Game, set, match. Crazy. High ground control. And we talked about Tracer again. Again, Tracer, why? Just given the breadth of the map, um, the space of the map, and the size of the map, the Reaper is going to be less valuable. The Tracer is going to be more useful for pushing cart, for controlling cart, for taking off angles, for pressing the enemy sojourn. So that's where the Tracer is better. When the maps are a little bit more narrow, Reaper is more valuable. Guys, the solution is often really, really simple. Why are people pulling Tracer? Because she's more mobile. Reaper's better close range. That's that's it. It's really that simple, y'all. So he's going to try and stop Cart without taking too much damage. That's the goal. And when he's playing versus the Tracer, there's going to be more time spent on actual dies because the neutral front trade is not as important. There's going to be more about controlling the enemy Sojourn and enemy Kiriko from taking good angles. Back to high ground. We stopped Cart, but I started taking too much damage, so I am out. We might see a counter dive here, but it also will probably be better doing what he's about to do now, which is jump Iris for Susuzu. And there it is, right? There's a cooldown advantage. We can now push. Do you guys see that? We've seen Bubble. We've seen Suzu. I can now push the core because this core does not have Suzu and does not have Bubble. Maybe we don't get the kill, but maybe we get an HP trade that favors us. Okay. Oh, shoot. He's like, oh, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Early Bubble, though. Early Bubble. They can maybe push that. So this is where like the tricky thing is, is again, we talked about this on Nepal Shrine. Does Fearless want to punish the cooldown advantage that they have? Or does he think that the choke is too nasty? Right now he thinks the choke is too nasty, so he's willing to let them waste bubble because I can't push up there, right? That's always a balance, which is more important. Haha. <laughs> Smurf uses jump. They have good angle, and again, look at the, look at the angles they have in the sky, right? On Smurf, look at that. Every single angle in the world on him, so they should be able to punish. We didn't make it, chat. 
No shot. Shh, no. We'll have to, we'll check, we'll check. We'll wait for one more after this. We'll one more run, surely, surely. Rigged, man. It's probably a no nipple rule on the uh, Overwatch League stream. Shame. Sad. <sighs> Sad, man. They're going to be missing out on pure art. Controlling Tracer, because there's nothing else better to do. Both teams end up at the choke. la di da di da Probably what we'll see from Fuel is a late Kiriko ultimate once they commit. Give them a little bit of space, then punish them. Now, let me, let me pause for just a second. You guys have probably noticed across the entirety of these maps that Fearless, for the most part, doesn't go for a lot of dives. He's playing... When he gets primal, when he gets an opportunity or cooldown advantage, sometimes he's going aggressive, but he's often playing relatively passive. Now, I don't want you guys taking the wrong lesson from this, that this is how you play Monkey. This is how you play Monkey in the mirror and versus these specific Brawly or Lucio-style comps. Because all of these comps... Like, think about it. If he hard dives any of these heroes, they're all going to have defensive cooldowns and they're all going to be able to punish him. But if you're playing this into like an Ana Zen composition, or if you're playing this into a Sigma comp or a Diva comp or a Zarya comp, totally different story. So what we're talking about is some things that Winston is good at, but also keep in mind that Fearless is playing a much more conservative, even frontline focused style of tank, more so than he's playing a style of tank that you're going to be able to mimic in your rank games. There's some things that we can learn from this, pushing cooldown advantages, playing cover, playing corner, playing around your team's timing. Um, going aggressively with primal on isolated targets, but keep in mind that there's certain playstyle things are different, right? Are different. All right. Don't, don't, don't lose your head. You know what I'm saying? There's a Kiriko Wolt mirror. He's going for backline, right? Because remember, now there's no Reaper, okay? So there's nobody really for him to contest. He can't really contest Tracer. Tracer's too hard. So I'm gonna zone backline. I'm gonna zone Sojourn. I'm gonna zone Lucio. Or Kiriko, right? Even if I just force her TP and 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 and, and um, um brrr, Suzu, it's still fine. Alrighty, Gerardo up next. Really? Pog. Okay. Um. Going back to point because that's where we're fighting. Probably see some aggression on the Sojourn with this Q here. Um. Maybe they go for an Ajax on the Lucio here. Ah, uh, unlucky Edison gets isolated. I don't know how. I'm honestly very surprised by this Primal Rage. I do not think this is a good decision. This is a 4v5, and I know why he's doing it. He's trying to buy time um, so that his team can re-engage, but I don't think it will work. I think the Sojourn is still too far away. Um, he's noticed that he's not even playing it for kills. He's just trying to buy time to stop cart. But I, I think this fight is lost. Kill me. Smarmiest people I've ever needed in my life. Give me a break. I just watched it. Talk about it. Talking trash to me. I feel like my face is now glowing right now because it is now completely dark outside. I have now officially eclipsed the D-Gen model and we are now evolving into the next layer. <laughs> okay, control of high ground. <laughs> See, the teams are keeping Tracer here. I mean, I assume it's just because they already had the Tracer. Ooh, can he stage back on? He's just basically bouncing on Kart to try and stop Kart from uh, going anywhere. And then if they do call for hard engage, he's ready to go for the hard engage. But there was really no reason for them to do anything there other than just shoot cart, because it should be theoretically really hard for Dynasty. What's my skincare routine? Well, <clears throat> I take porcupine quills. I grind them up. Open wide. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say here. 
He's definitely looking for the Sojourn. He's looking for the right targets, but there's just a lot of chaos on the screen. There's nothing super big brain, un unfortunately, we can learn from this. Skin care. Oh, if my skin is literally glowing, well, I get a little bit of a... A little bit of radioactive material. That's unfortunate. He completely misses the Kiriko slash Sojourn. So I actually think... I think this bubble was a mistake here. I don't think this bubble was necessary. I think, like, it would have been better to kind of short jump this. What the heck is that? What is that? What is it? Is it a pinata? Why is it just lying there? Um... And then be on the bubble later, because <clears throat> I think he could agree to that one a little bit better. The primal was understandable, but I think the bubble itself would have, could, could have been used better. Unfortunate. Pinata. A little bit of plutonium. You know how it goes. This is just a zoning bubble. I'm not sure if I... I think it's probably okay. He'll probably get it back by the time he needs it. They go to Reaper because now it's more of a short-range fight location. He's taking a lot of damage before this fight starts. A little bit of a lack of decisiveness from, from Dallas there. Um, about just what they wanted to do. Always jumping the Sojourn first because it's better to force Sojourn slide into a bad position than Kiriko because Sojourn is more scary than Kiriko. So you'd rather zone the Sojourn first. Dallas is good. Dallas is good. You guys have to understand that there's going to be variance in playing as well. Like, Soul could have just had a bad day today, too. They could have just had a bad day today. The unfortunate thing of the situation is that the person who wins Overwatch League is not always the best team. It's just the best team at that very moment. We talked about this yesterday. There's variance. There's severe variance in even Overwatch League, League teams play. Trying to bubble off and isolate the enemy monkey. Look at the focus on the enemy sojourn. There's another bubble. Headshot diff, unfortunately. Oh, I said diff again. Oh my goodness, shame on me. And there's a sojourn. Oh, he missed it just barely, but should should still die. She does. Beat is half a second late. There's the bubble again to zone off the Winston. Disengage, guys. Disengage. Disengage. We're out. We're out. We're out. Loose Chio is now dead, so he's going to try and follow up off of that, but he's going to die for that as well. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh. That's scary. Backline Sojourn. Backline Sojourn. Okay, so they're able to control it out. Okay, so I think Dallas played this one pretty well. Fearless played this one pretty well. Um, definitely seemed to have more issues when there was like less of a direction when there was on Sojourn Tracer. It wasn't quite as obvious like where and when he should be going. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. Which what team do I believe to be the best right now? I mean, when they're playing at their best, I think Dallas is probably the best team in the league at this meta. But if proper gets hot, if London gets hot. If Houston gets hot, you know what I'm saying? Clearing out the tracer. Zoning out the monkey. His bubble is still alive, so he's still safe. Oh, they boop the slide. Huge. Deep jump now, because he's about to get his bubble back again. <clears throat> The fight winning boot from look like Chio. Huh, tickle monster fight. Well, the problem with that is even though Grand Finals is best of seven, it's a day to day thing. You would need a Grand Finals over the course of like a week. <clears throat> 
to really tell who is the best. But that just doesn't really work with the Overwatch format, of course. So again, you notice here, you notice exactly what he's doing with his bubbles. He could jump the Sojourn, but then the Sojourn would just slide and then he could potentially be isolated. So what he's going to do instead is he's going to place his bubble where it's actually blocking off and isolating the enemy Tracer and Monkey. Still isolating the Sojourn, right? He still forces the Sojourn to shift. You see that? The result is still the same, but he does so at a lesser risk for himself. And he's while he's able to zone off the rest of the enemy team as well. So if he had jumped the Sojourn, he would have missed. He would have gotten, he would have been doing nothing, really. But now he's able to get good isolation on the Sojourn, force her to adjust her angle, and still get some tickling on the back line. Dream roster for the Savannah? Honestly, don't know. I am, like, here's the things you guys have to realize about. I am the absolute worst person when it comes to, like, doing power, rank power rankings, predictions, things like that. Because I've been in the league enough to where I just don't like... I know that I can never really know who's going to show up on a day-to-day -day basis. And I also don't like making judgment of players because... It's really hard to judge players how good they are without knowing the full situation, right? So Dream Roster? I don't know. Some players are probably overrated and some players are probably underrated given their positioning or given their situation. Let's actually watch this fight again. Hard engage fight. He's on that back line. Notice that he's picking the squishy. Squishy, 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 squishy. Bronze Winston? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're talking fearless here, y'all. Don't really know why he's doing that. I think he might be farming up Kiriko ultimate, to be honest with y'all. But I'm honestly not too sure. Or just getting a little bit of scouting information. I'm not honestly sure. And normally you don't see monkeys jumping tracers, but... There's not a lot else to do. Now, right now, look at Sparkle. Now we can actually go for backline because we have Primal Rage. And we're not just playing to zone, we're playing to kill. So, here comes the Primal Rage. May not even be necessary. I'll use it anyway. Why not? Alrighty, we're moving along at a brisk pace y'all. We talked a lot about the macro and the, and the more detail oriented stuff earlier on So now we can just kind of call it like we see it you Don't need to bog down the details Hard engage the beat focusing the sojourn zoning off the back line trying to play life now until he gets his bubble back He's gonna go for mega ah! Doesn't quite get it probably would have been better for him to jump out this direction than to go for the mega I think that was a mistake well, I know, actually, and I know that was a mistake. A little bit of a flip here. Curious to see how Fuel, Fuel probably just uses their Kiriko ultimate on the floor. Yep. And then dares anybody to kind of what fight with them. Reaper focus. Banger. Alrighty, we keep going. We're almost done, chat. We're almost done. Tracer is just the space on this map and the cart pressure. It's a more wide open map. Now, here's an interesting question, chat. Do you think this bubble was wasted? Because I don't think his team has very good angles on this choke. So I think the answer might be yes, actually. And he might die for it. Oh, yeah, he dies for it. He dies for it. Not, Im not immediately, but eventually. Please, Dan? Could you coach me in the alpha? I gave you the money and I had the time. If by money you mean millions of dollars, sure. He's gonna go hard with primal, hard with primal. Ha 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 ha! Don't die, don't die. Yep. See, there you go. Do you see? This is what this is what the monkey thing does. Watch. He zones the entire backline because they all have to peel off fits, and then the rest of his team does an AFK. They then take that opportunity to push profit. Who? Thinks, surely I'm safe, guys. Surely I'm safe. He is not safe. That's tanking right there. You don't even necessarily need to get the kill on the target he's focusing. He's going to create a tension that's going to enable his team to get a kill on something else. And that's it, guys. That's all she wrote. All right. So, big things from Fearless. Timing was good. Bubble usage was mostly good. Target priority with and without primal and cover usage. Um, it was really interesting to see how that kind of evolved from map to map. 
and how th when things didn't go well, you could almost predict when fights were going to go poorly. Oh, I don't know if that should have been right. And then sure enough, things go poorly from there. So, okay. Well, I'm literally...